Greetings everyone, welcome back to Blade Bias, and welcome back to my desk that gets more and more messy with every unboxing that I film in this little recording session. But no more, today is not an unboxing video, today is a long-awaited update video. And you know, I was going to talk about the Orion 1.5 and how much I've been enjoying that, but you know, looking at this stand that we unboxed last video, I think it might just be more more what's the word that i'm looking for i think people might be more interested in hearing about the newer bala song the thomas default especially with all the people that i've seen asking for recommendations from me in the comment section guys don't worry i get it i'm not like yelling at you or anything like that but please check the description of my videos i have taken the time to lay out an entire document that will answer all of those types of questions so that I don't get, you know, inundated with the, I have this much to spend, what do you recommend kind of thing. It's a document down there. It, it, it covers preferences, price points, all that stuff. And I put a good amount of work into keeping it up to date and making sure that it reflects my current opinions. Uh, so please go check that out. Um, but today will be, and if you want any up, like if you want any more in-depth thoughts about ballad songs, just go watch the video, the up, the updated I spent a week with video or whatever on the Bala song that you're looking for. So, what did I think of my time with the default? In case you don't remember, because it has been a while, the default is a new Bala song from Thomas Bala song. This exact model selling for $78.99 on Amazon with a G10 variation instead of the carbon fiber, which I think it's carbon fiber, uh, selling for $68.99. It comes in at 4.3 ounces, an overall length of 10.24 inches. It is G10 or carbon fiber on top of a 7075 aluminum channel handle. And it is on bushings. I was, gosh, I lost my train of thought there for a second. And it's on bushings. And it is being heavily marketed as the beginner ballast song to end all other beginner Bala songs. The name default strongly implies that this is what Thomas believes that you will be using when you get into the hobby and it's the best choice for you. As well as a lot of the marketing about how this, you know, flips amazing and will stay with you for the rest of your time in the hobby and it will grow with you and it's, it's this and that and it's so amazing and it has glassy vocals and everything. It's amazingly tuned, all of that. But that's the marketing. What is my opinion on, on all that? From what I have spent with the default, I think it's a good combination of great beginner ballast song and not living up to the insanely lofty claims that are being made through the advertising. Because while I think that the default is an amazing choice for someone looking to get into the hobby, I seriously doubt that it will be the new default recommendation. And there are a couple main reasons for that, which we'll go over in this video. But I don't want that to be, I don't want the point to be lost throughout the, the me talking about all of this, that this is still a great beginner ballad song. And if you think it looks cool or you like the ergonomics or you like the look of it, you will most likely enjoy it. I personally would put it at a solid... I don't know, a B, A tier flipper, probably more B because of its price and relative quality compared to some other stuff on the market. But, you know, a solid passing grade. It's a really, really solid ballast song. Do I think that it's going to beat out the likes of the Orion 1.5 or some of the stuff from Nabali's like the Cheese? No, but I think it does give solid competition to those ballast songs that I mentioned. Um, and the biggest and most prominent reason for that is just the ergonomics of it. This is a massive edit-like experience that is incredibly blocky, and that is just not how some people like to flip their ballast songs. Some people prefer round, some people do prefer blocky, and some people prefer a hybrid of the two. Me personally, I like blocky where it matters, and I like it to be rounded where it matters. Something like when I fan, I want it to be a little more rounded, but when I do ladders, I want it to be a little more blocky. That's why I love things like the Orion. It's rounded at the top, a blocky at the bottom. Or the Slift T, it's rounded at the top, blocky at the bottom. Or the Seraph, it's blocky enough, but still rounded enough. So I do like those hybrids. Some people don't, some people do. And I think I've found that it's probably best for beginners to be receiving something that is a mix of the two. 
because blockiness really can interrupt even an experienced person's experience with fans and choker fans, which is something that it's already very difficult for beginners to learn in the first place. So while this thing is amazing, well, it's not even amazing for ladders because the jimping does absolutely nothing because my fingers are resting on the scales rather than the jimping itself. But while it's better for things like ladders and rollovers and stuff like that, I find myself struggling on fans and especially choker fans quite a bit because I have these small hands and the big blocky handles get caught up in my fingers quite easily. So I found that, yes, while it is a fantastic beginner option, calling it the default recommendation, I think, is a little bit... It's a little bit... Uh, optimistic. Let's go with that, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's just really that blockiness that comes down to it. The blockiness and the size. Uh, while it is an incredible flipper, it's a decent level of handle bias while still being able to fan quite well. Fans are definitely shaky. They're definitely not very flat. It's missing a little bit of tip weight, but rollovers are amazing. It sticks to your hand in chaplains and and rollovers, um, aerials are predictable. Like it's a very predictable and good flipping Vala song. But if you can't get those past those ergonomics, which I know some people can't because I've seen the comments of like the edit and the edit light, where people go, it's an amazing flipper, but I just can't get past how big and chunky it is. I think it's going to be the same for this thing. Um, and that chunkiness definitely isn't without its place. Something that was brought up to me in a, I think it was a stream that I was doing a few weeks ago is that the Thomas default actually manages to do something that squid didn't with the Nautilus because the Nautilus is the thing that this thing's going to receive the most comparisons to. It's an aluminum channel handle with the, the scales on top. Um, do I think it's better than the Nautilus? Maybe. I think I'd have to spend a little bit more time a B comparing the Nautilus in this, but I definitely think this beats out something from Nivalis like the Trident absolutely beats out something like that in my opinion um but they managed to do zen pins on a design like this and that is really where the chunkiness is coming from the nautilus is so thin and the by extension the aluminum channels are so thin that if you were to put zen pins in it they wouldn't the handles wouldn't be able to handle the force that was being applied to them when the blade and the handles slammed into the pins and it would crack, it would break. Squid has said this, I think, at multiple occasions, and that's why the, the Nautilus is on tang pins. This thing managed to overcome that, but in doing so, they created an aluminum channel that is basically the size of, like, another Balasong, and then added the scales on top of it, which makes it even thicker and even more chunky and blocky. Now, I think they could have avoided this a little bit by maybe rounding the scales, but then that would have upped the price by an exorbitant amount. So I definitely can't blame them for the chunkiness, but the reality is I think that's going to be a hang-up for a lot of people, and it's definitely a hang-up for me. Now, the good of this is, like you said, those, or like the, like the marketing says, those glassy vocals. I didn't want to do this before the video because I wanted you to see just how good it can sound. But I'm going to put a few drops of my Carbon Honey Medium right into the pivots here. Not too much, but just a little. And you guys will get a first-hand, well, okay, a second-hand look at just how good this thing can sound. The reality is the sounds of Bella songs doesn't really carry through microphones the best because a lot of the bass of the sound is lost and, you know, audio stuff, microphone recording stuff. But this thing truly does sound amazing. And if you're someone who's like, ooh, a ballad song that sounds good could trump anything that flips a little better, this is absolutely the best thing that you can buy, even up to maybe 150. I think the sound on this thing is truly one of its strong points in terms of, you know, weird things that people really enjoy about a ballad song that doesn't really affect the overall flipping experience. And also the tolerances which contribute to this amazing sound, are very, 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 very good. They're not quite machine-wise level. Like, they're not the best in the industry. But for being a Balasong that's being produced over in China by a third-party designer, they are incredibly rock-solid. I'd compare them to something like the Teflon Vulp or the Cheese or something like that. But now that the 
oil has hopefully worked its way in. Let's give this thing a sound test. You can see, or maybe you can't, in person it just is so glassy and 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 chunky sounding like there's a very distinct low kind of bassy rumble with the sound yet it still kind of has that zip it sounds truly truly amazing and like glassy genuinely as much as i you know kind of laugh at the term glassy vocals you can't really argue with results so it sounds and it's tuned amazing and it flips well enough that i think this is a really good pickup for anyone who's interested in trying this kind of configuration that being something that isn't you know all aluminum it has those scales on top if you want to try out g10 or carbon fiber that being said the flipping experience while i find it to be very good i have heard that the g10 variant because g10 is a little heavier is going to be a little bit more handle biased and if this thing were a little bit more handle biased i don't know if i would like it as much i obviously can't speak to this i can't confirm it or deny it but just keep that in mind that that has been the testimony of some people who have bought one um and compared them is that the g10 is a little heavier which makes it a little more handle biased and i think in terms of like me personally a little bit more handle bias would make this just a little bit less enjoyable to me. It's kind of already on the edge of what I would consider, you know, comfortable for my preferences, but I also prefer a far more neutral experience anyway. So take that with as big of a grain of salt as you need. But I would find that it would make the overall experience a little bit more clunky and uncomfortable to say the least, because you have that blockiness in the handles, a little bit more handle bias would make it feel a little bit heavier, kind of a little bit more sluggish. And I think would definitely detract a lot of points for me personally. But again, some people might like that. So your mileage will certainly vary on that front. So overall, I think that the Thomas Default lives up to its name as a beginner ballast song. I think this is a fantastic option if you're looking to get into the hobby. There's really been, really never been a better time to get into the hobby with things like the Canyon, the Orion, the Cheese, and now the Default at this sub $100 price point. Um, you are spoiled for choice as a beginner. And I think if you're interested in the overall feature set or the uh, general construction of the default, then it truly won't steer you the wrong way. But as for someone who prefers something maybe a little more round, a little less chunky, a little less handle biased, this will definitely be something that I don't think you would enjoy as much, although there is still a lot to enjoy about it, especially for 78 bucks. So I would comfortably put it at a, if it looks interesting to you, go ahead and get it. If there's a feature that you like, go ahead and get it. You really won't be disappointed. Um, but like I said, the decision to call it the default was an optimistic one at best, because I still think there are other ballast songs that kind of fit the default role a little bit better. Most notably, maybe something like the cheese. But that is all at the end of the day, just my opinion. I did also want to say that this was provided for free for the purpose of these videos by Thomas himself. Um, but any and all opinions are my own. And I was not paid nor told to say anything in specific. So, and sorry that disclaimer wasn't towards the beginning of the videos. But, uh, yeah. I think that is going to do it. My head mount is driving me absolutely crazy and it's really really hot down here thank you all for watching let me know what you think of the default did you get one what do you think of it leave it in the comments below and i will see you all in the next one it's a solid thing and oh my gosh it just sounds so good see so, yep